Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to tomorrow. It's a really exciting time for space flight right now. So much is happening. But what has me excited is a qualification test for the space launch system and a new crew on a new spaceship bound for the International Space Station. This is your space pod for July 6th, 2016. So first off, I wanted to give a huge congratulations to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Lockheed Martin for the successful orbital insertion of the Juno spacecraft around Jupiter. Oh man, I'm really excited about this. However, that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. Jared Head's going to be making a space pod that you'll see later this month, giving you the full rundown about the Juno spacecraft. What I wanted to talk about today was a critical rocket booster test for the space launch system, which took place on June 28th. Specifically, this was the second and last ground qualification test of the five-segment solid rocket booster, an upgraded version of the solid rocket boosters that were used with the space shuttle. Two, one, fire. And we have ignition of NASA's space launch system solid rocket motor powering us on our journey to Mars. The test successfully took place at Orbital ATK's test facilities in Promontory, Utah, and delivered approximately 3.6 million pounds of thrust. When the booster was tested, they tried to condition the temperature of the motor to around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the colder end of the accepted temperature range for the propellant on these solid rocket boosters. And when it was ignited, the temperatures inside the booster reached nearly 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This was to simulate the temperature of the boosters while it was near the end of flight before they would burn out and be separated from the core stage of the space launch system. The first qualification motor test was to simulate the boosters at launch, and that test was successfully completed in March of 2015. Pending any major redesigns or fixes, hopefully the test data looks great and the solid rocket boosters will be ready for the Space Launch System's debut flight in 2018. All that remains to have the rocket ready for that first flight is the testing and integration on the RS-25 engines that will power the core stage of the Space Launch System and work on the upper stage, which may or may not be changing soon, but that's a topic for another time. Moving right along, China conducted a surprise launch of a Long March 4B rocket on Wednesday, June 29th at 321 Coordinated Universal Time. The launch of this rocket took place from the Jiquan Space Center in northwest China's Inner Mongolia region, and it lofted a secret Chinese spy satellite called the Xijian 16-2, apparently the second Xijian 16. As usual, China did not announce this launch ahead of time, which is their practice with military payloads. And as for the rest of this month, we do know that there is a non-military Chinese launch that's taking place, and hopefully that goes off well. But then again, we might be surprised with some more military payloads this month. We'll see. Now finally, I wanted to talk about how later tonight we will hopefully be seeing a successful Soyuz launch with a new crew for the International Space Station. This launch will be with an upgraded spaceship, the MS series of Soyuz spacecraft, which features more efficient solar panels, a new lightweight docking system, a new lightweight computer system, and the ability to have continuous telemetry and control via satellite, not just via ground stations. The launch of this spacecraft was delayed a little bit due to a problem with the control system. However, engineers believe that the problem has been resolved and hopefully this new spacecraft will be able to rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station successfully. The crew on board this spacecraft are going to be, from left to right, Roscosmos cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, and JAXA astronaut Takuya Onishi. So good luck to everyone at Roscosmos and NASA. Hopefully they have a successful launch. And good luck to Expeditions 47 and 48. I hope that your missions at the International Space Station are successful. So now I want to know what you think about all of this. Do you think that the space launch system will be ready to fly in 2018? Do you ever think that we'll get extended launch coverage from China? I don't know. Let me know in the comments section below what you think about all of these updates. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. We're also all over the internet and would invite you to connect with us on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, and of course our website, tomorrow.tv, where you can join in the conversation with us and other space enthusiasts. This is a crowdfunded show through Patreon, and 
I want to give a huge shout out and a very big thank you to both of our founders of Tomorrow, who are contributing $50 or more every month so that we can create this show. But I also want to give a huge thank you to all of our architects, engineers, ambassadors, and dreamers of Tomorrow, whose continued support allows us to keep making these space pods. So thank you so much to all of you. I'm eternally grateful for your generosity. It just amazes me that we're able to do all of this. And if you would like to support the show, if you're not already, please visit patreon.com slash spacepod. So thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know just a little bit more today than you did yesterday. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.